Hello and welcome to the Wildlife Moto Channel. So this is a bit of a springtime shakedown ride on the Interceptor. It's the first time this year, I think, that I've properly taken this bike out. And I am wondering if I'm a little bit premature because the roads still feel a little bit salty. You know, this kind of weird kind of gray color here. They're a little bit, a little bit salty, I think still. Which is fine, it just means I'm going to have to get my son to clean my bike after this ride. <laughs> I mean, come on, he's got to earn his pocket money somehow. Excuse me one second, I have just realised. I always do this. Let's just jump off! <sighs> because, uh, like a true idiot, I've left my bag undone. We've got flappage. <laughs> Oh, it's unzipped as well. Gosh, what did I lose out of there then? Hopefully nothing too valuable. <laughs> oh, God. All right, we're back. The bag's done up. <laughs> so, yeah, a bit of a shakedown ride on the Interceptor today. Absolutely beautiful February morning. It's about 15 degrees. Lovely blue skies. What way am I going to go? I actually have no idea where I am. But yeah, it's nice. It's a nice day. So I thought I'd put the camera on and have a quick little chat with you guys about some of the stuff that's going on for 2023. Some of the plans. Whoa, suddenly we're off road. And some of the things that I kind of hope to get done this year. I think I've got three things. Uh, number one, I have got to get that BMW sorted out. I don't know if you guys have been watching those videos. But uh, yeah, recently I got a, an old 1981 R100 that I have completely pulled apart. <laughs> and I wasn't expecting that I was going to do it. I, I bought it and I thought, oh, I'll just kind of tidy it up a little bit and just enjoy having an old classic bike in the collection. But I just couldn't deal with a lot of the things that could have been better on it. You know, after 42 years, there was definitely a little bit of decay here, there, and, well, pretty much everywhere, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, it, um, it's just been completely pulled apart. Everything's getting done on it, suspension, engine, transmission, paint, you know, everything from powder coat to bearings, the whole lot. And uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it actually. It's a fantastic process to go through. Learning a lot about that old bike and yeah, enjoying it. But I'm trying not to, to rush it. I'm trying to do it all properly. Whilst at the same time, really, 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 really wanting to get out and, and ride it and enjoy it. I've just got to make sure that I don't cut too many corners wanting to try and catch this season, if you know what I mean. It's just better to do it slowly, do it properly, do it once. Because it kind of leads me on to my second plan for this year, and that is to hopefully take that bike on a bit of a post-wedding honeymoon trip because I'm getting married later this year <laughs> and after that I'd love to kind of go out for a proper two-up tour on the old Beamer somewhere like Europe or maybe even like the North Coast 500 something like that but you know go on a bit of an adventure something with a a nice kind of mix of you know big miles but also um, a bit of a bit of adventure you know a nice bit of adventure that would be so cool and i honestly can't think of a better bike to do it on than the cs but actually that's a lie i can think of many better bikes to do it on but i just think <laughs> i think it will add something to the adventure as long as it doesn't break down it will be fine <laughs> yeah small caveat there 
always do it on the Indian. But having done that trip a couple of years ago around Wales on that bike, um, I feel like that one's already ticked off. I'd like to do it on a different bike. And uh, I do actually have some plans to get another bike this year because I don't know if you remember me talking a few months back about my Aprilia Tuono, the 1100 factory that I had that was unfortunately stolen, got nicked out of my garage and um, it's taken quite a long time for me to get the money back from my insurance company. I'm not going to name names, but the insurance company that I used back then were not only a right pain about actually paying out in the first place, doing all kinds of ridiculousness around the value of the bike, but uh, they also decided to go bust <laughs> halfway through managing my claim. So yeah, while I don't need to mention their name, I'm sure a lot of people know exactly who I'm talking about. I absolutely hate them. They will never darken my door again because they are back, having gone bankrupt. And uh, yeah, just an appalling organization. So I ended up having to deal with the FSCS, the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, to try and recover what I could. And uh, in the end, yeah, I did manage to get a sensible valuation and uh, I got 90% of the payout because the FSCS will only ever pay 90%. That's the most you can get out of them. So yeah, it cost me 10% of the value of my bike. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> the good news is, off the back of all that, is that I now have the funds kind of set aside for something new. And I was actually down at the MCN motorbike show at the XL yesterday and uh, having a look at some of the new bikes from the various brands stopped by BMW just salivating over <laughs> things like the S1000 RR what an incredible bike that is oh my goodness incredibly expensive as well but beautiful beautiful bike Kawasaki again they've got some gorgeous bikes I did stop by Suzuki. I'm not feeling Suzuki at the moment. I don't know why, it's just... I don't know, maybe I'm old, but I'm just not... I don't get the design for a lot of their new bikes. That kind of slightly weird, cyclopsy, big LED lens thing up front. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's, yeah, it's not all about looks, is it? But you have got to like how your bike looks. I'm just not sure I could uh, get down with that aesthetic. But that's probably just me. KTM is the same, I mean, beautiful bikes, but uh, as in beautiful bikes to ride, but um, a lot of them now have got looks that only a mother could love, <laughs> to be fair. It's like, wow, they, just odd, odd looking. And I've owned one, so I can say that, it's fine. It's not all about looks though. I think as I get a little bit older, I just do lean towards more of a kind of classic styling. I was over at the Royal Enfield stand for a bit and just they're just killing it. The, the bikes are just beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Bikes like the Super Meteor, I even sat on one of those Super Meteors. I wouldn't buy one, it's not for me, but you know, if you want this kind of engine set up with a little bit more of a cruisery feel, feet forwards, felt a little bit like a smaller version of my Indian. Then yeah, a, a way to go. Because <laughs> I tell you what, this engine is more than capable of doing big miles, but I've always said the actual kind of setup of this bike is more for kind of shorter blasts out rather than doing kind of touring on and stuff like that. But I reckon that the Super Meteor, yeah, it's a great bike. I was looking at the Kawasaki's as well, like the uh, the Ninja, the Ninja H2. That is a <laughs> that is a mean bit of kit. They actually had a big drag strip set up down the um, the middle of the XL. I 
Apple didn't film it, but they sent one of the um, H2s down there. Flipping heck, that thing tore the roof off the place. Absolute beast. <laughs> and I'd love to have one. But you know, if I did get a bike like that again, something a little bit more performance focused, I definitely wouldn't keep it in London. Uh, you know, it's just, I, I don't think my nerves could handle it in terms of constantly worrying that it's going to get nicked. It would terrify me. And I'm not saying for a minute that London's the only place where your bike can get stolen because that is absolutely not true. I think any, well, anywhere, but in particular, any kind of big city or built up area where you've got a lot of people, unfortunately, there's always the risk of crime. And uh, I think the only solution for me is just not to, not to have those types of bikes in that environment. So I, I, I've got a little place where I could stash it. Um, so I'd probably just have to uh, jump on one of my other bikes and ride out and keep that thing well away from people. Such is the state of the world. But hey, um, what can you do? What can you do? So yeah, so that is definitely a goal for this year is to try to um, complete the garage a little bit with something a little bit more performance focused. You know, the bikes that I've got, I'm really lucky to have the bikes I've got. I absolutely love them. You know, bikes like my Indian Scouts, bikes like this one, the Interceptor, uh, the BMW CS. Again, you know, I, I want to use that bike. I want to want to actually put that thing back on the road full time and ride it. So that would definitely be uh, a bike that I can use for kind of touring and bigger miles. None of those bikes are really particularly performance focused. So that's the gap that I need to try and get filled if I can. So yeah, so thankfully, finally got the, uh, the situation sorted. No thanks to my insurance company. We'll just put that one behind us. Chalk it up to a bit of experience. <laughs> I think I'm gonna crack on with this ride now. Hopefully I can try and find somewhere for a bit of a, a, bit of a snack. So you can find a bit of an egg banjo somewhere. <laughs> cup of tea be nice and I do need to jump off this bike at some point and try and sort the suspension out because it's a it's a little bit skittish at the moment it's a little bit hard and that is because I think I've lost a bit of weight since I last got on this bike in fact I know I have I've probably lost about five or six kilograms trying to get into the old wedding suit, you know. So I've been cutting back on the pies. Actually, that's a lie. I haven't really been cutting back on the pies. I have quit sugar. I quit, um, I quit drinking a couple of years ago, which was one thing, but then I, I just cut all the, all the kind of sugary snacks and things like that, all the desserts, all the stuff I like, basically. It's now gone. But it is good for the old waistline, I'm not gonna lie. This bike's feeling a little bit oversprung. I think I weigh about 70 kilos now, so to sort that out. Woo! Oh, sounds amazing. And I still get the question a lot actually on the channel, even though I have made videos on it, but I appreciate that not everyone's seen all those videos. But when people hear this bike, they're like, what are those pipes? Scorpion Red Power. You can get them on the Hitchcock's website. And I do recommend if you're gonna spend a little bit of money on your, on your system is to, is to do just that and get the um, free flowing headers as well. Because that removes the, uh, the strangulation <laughs> from the system just opens the bike right up. It's the best mod I ever did on this bike. Absolutely transforms it. And they're not too loud, you know, they're, they're a little bit louder than stock. 
but it's more of a tone. Can you hear that? That lovely rumble. Listen to this. It's like a proper blat with a little bit of pop and spit on the diesel. Really, really nice. And so, so much more kind of responsive now. We're gonna do little blips to downshift. Really, really opens the bike up. So you can have a lot of fun, even on the little 650 Enfield. Beautiful bike. As I've talked about in the past, I've done other little things like I put the, the booster plug on it and the, um, the what do you call it, the uh, DNA air filter and all that. Not really sure what what difference that makes. I think the booster plug did smooth it slightly. I don't think you can actually put those on the latest bikes. I think Euro 5 or whatever it is, you can't. But um, I, think it's, I think it's helped a little bit anecdotally. I haven't tested it, but I am really happy with how this bike rides. Every time I get on it, I'm just like, yep, love this bike. <laughs> anyway, I'm out of here. I'm gonna do some proper riding now. See you later. Woo!